In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Your life is not about you. This is a phrase that has turned over in my mind many times since I've heard it, first heard it. It may seem a simple phrase, self-evident, but I don't think that to our ears most of the time it is. For instance, Time Magazine has featured an article called The Child-Free Life. The photo that is on the cover of the magazine tells the story, really. A young couple lying on a pristine beach, smiling blissfully up at the camera, and over top them is written, a child-free life, when having it all means not having children. Now, I realize there are different issues and circumstances that keep people from having children, but that's not what this article is about. The article makes the point that if young adults want a happier life, they can legitimately think about erasing children from the picture altogether. You know, not that long ago, the good life, or having it all, meant that you could be married and have a career and have children too. But now it apparently means a relationship and a career without the responsibility of children. What the article implies is that children are basically annoying, expensive, and demanding, which at times there are all three. But the article goes on to say, why would you allow children to interfere with your progressive march toward the good life? In other words, the message of the article is this. Your life is all about you. Do what makes you happy. Now, I admit this is a seductive message. My life is about me. It has to be. I should pursue my own goals. I should do what makes me happy. I should set my own agenda. In short, I should be calling all the shots. After all, I'm in control of my own destiny. Now that's a message we hear proclaimed in our culture in different ways every day. And it's a message that springs up from our own hearts as well. Your life is all about you. It presents itself as a self-evident truth, but it's not. It's not because and for the very practical reason that it doesn't work. You see, God has not made any one of us to be the center of the universe. God has made us for a specific purpose, though, and He knows what that is. And if we're going to find out what that is, we must be willing to fall into his loving arms. I think falling is the hard part. But God has ownership of our lives. God alone knows the plan. We are made to be used by God for some specific service. Now what I'm trying to tell you uh, another man said much better, so I want to read to you his words. His name is John Henry Newman. He said, God has created me to do him some definite service. He has created me and committed some work to me, which he has not committed to another person. I have my mission. I may not fully know what it is in this life, but I will in the next. I may link in a chain, a bond of connection between persons. He has not created me for nothing. I shall do good. I shall do his work. Therefore, I will trust him. Whatever I am, I can never be thrown away. If I am in sickness, my sickness will serve him. In perplexity, my perplexity will serve him. If I am in sorrow, my sorrow will serve him. For he does nothing in vain. He knows what he is about. 
He may take away my friends. He may throw me among strangers. He may make me feel desolate, make my spirit sink. He may hide my future from me. Still, he knows what he is about. What is Newman trying to tell us? He's saying, in short, that God has created you. God has a plan for your life. And that plan isn't all about you. It's for some greater purpose than you can presently imagine. You know, there's this gospel phrase that we read today at the blessing of the palms. It's a very short phrase. It's this. The Lord needs it. That's it. Jesus needed an ass or donkey for his triumphal entry, entry into Jerusalem, and he sends his disciples to go get one. When asked by the owners of the donkey what they are doing, the disciples simply respond, the Lord needs it. You know, the culture and our own hearts keep telling us, make yourself happy, live for yourself. But the scriptures and our conscience, which is the echo of God's voice within us, tells us something different. It tells us, come here, child, for the Lord needs you. Think about your baptism. When you were baptized, the priest said to you, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Sealed, marked for yourself, to do what you want to do, to go where you want to go. No. Jesus Christ has marked you because the Lord needs you. St. Paul says it this way, You are not your own. You have been bought with a price. And that price is Jesus' own life. So, your life is not about you. If it's not about you, and if God really is in control, then how does God want to use you? I don't know. All that I know is that he does. And I know something about what your work will look like when he is using you. Your work will in some way be telling people about God. It may speak to others about God's patience. Others of you will be given a job that displays God's creativity and ingenuity. God is going to use some of you to show others his passion for justice. And I have no doubt that in your life he's already done this many times. Some of you have been given gifts of mercy, and it's natural for you to act in a kind and gracious way. These gifts, whatever they may be, have been given to you that you may participate with and be used by God for the restoration of creation. I know that sounds like a, a very big idea, but it's really not. God works in small ways to bring redemption to his creation. Now, like that poor donkey we read about earlier, something is tying all of us down. It's usually something that isn't bad in and of itself. It's something like money or the desire for success or pleasure or recognition or respect. We invest so much time and energy into thinking about these things, at least if you're anything like me, you do. And we think those things will make us happy. But in the end, all they do is tie us down. But friends, let us not despair. God loves us. He is faithful in sending us help. He's faithful in sending us something that will unbind us. He sends us the scriptures, they unbind us. God at times sends us an angelic being to untie us. 
He may send you a saint to help you and untie you. Or he may use some circumstance in your life to unbind you. Whatever God chooses to use is up to him. What we can be sure of is this, that God will do it. God will unbind you. Why? Well, the Lord has need of you. And your life is not about you. You've been bought with a price, with the price of Jesus' own blood. And therefore, you belong to God.